Welcome to a tutorial video on HTML basics. In this video, I'm going to discuss attributes. In HTML, when we use the term attributes, we're actually talking about content that goes inside tags. In the previous video, we talked about nesting elements. That was content between an opening tag and a closing tag. In this video, with attributes, we're talking about content that goes inside the tag itself. There are two types of main categories of attributes. IDs and class. When we're trying to identify elements and tags within an HTML document, sometimes we're talking about hundreds, if not sometimes even thousands of lines of code. And it can get pretty daunting to try to figure out which the code goes where and which thing is which. To do that, we can use these sort of two categories of attributes, ID and class. An ID, like it implies, is an identification. Within HTML, if you give a tag, an element, an ID, it has to be unique, which makes sense. You want to be able to uniquely identify something within the content. If we're using a class attribute, however, it can go on multiple elements because it's more of a classification. Usually we use the metaphor of an animal. That is, we can give an animal a name like Jeff or Steve, but its classification is something like a lion or a giraffe. And you could have a group of lions and those could have different names like Susan and Jill would be names of lions, but its classification would be lion. So in this case here, we see the first use of an attribute appears on line three. ID equals and then its name, its ID in quotation marks. Quotation marks are important when we use them with attributes because it tells HTML and the web browser that looks at this that this is something together. The quotation marks groups all of whatever it is together as one unit. So we see here ID, the ID attribute, is equal to title within quotations. We see here on line 6 the same thing, ID equals subtitle. Now, subtitle is different from title, and so these could be uniquely identified using their ID because the IDs are different. So we have title and subtitle. Here we have class, its classification, and we have content. Notice on line 9 that the paragraph element also has class equals content. I des as I discussed in the metaphor of using animals or using lions, we could have multiple things have the same classification and that wouldn't really hurt anything. But if they had the same names, if they had the same ideas, that is, it would be hard to figure out which one was which. So we can give things elements, multiple of the same class. We can use it again and again and again if we want to, and we can group things within their classifications. But the IDs have to be unique. And so we see right here on line 9, ID first para for first paragraph marks it as unique within this. So we have three uses of the ID attribute, line 3 for title, line 6 for subtitle, and line 9 for first para. Within the H2 element here, highlighted lines 6 through 8, we see the use of class equals content. And starting on line 9 for the paragraph, we see class equals content. So as a review, attributes go inside tags, usually almost always within the opening tag of some element. Again, as a review, an HTML element is the opening tag, the content, and the closing tag. The two very general categories we talked about in this video are ID and class and we talked about them as an ID being something unique so we can identify which element and which tag it is within a larger document. Class, however, can be on multiple elements because it's more of a classification and so we can group things together in that way. So we can have a unique ID and a classification that's used across elements and across tags. Thanks for watching.